heavens were gold. When God created the world, it was perfect. It was gold. God looked at his creation and said, all things are good. Until the moment when sin came into this world. When sin came into this world, everything that is ugly, everything that is wrong came along with it. With sin came the frustrations that we see in the world. With sin came death into this world. With sin came the, the evil that we see, the wars, the anger, the bitterness, the rivalry that has brought the world into where it is today. But let me tell you, that God has a solution because at creation he had it in mind to bring solution to the problem. And that is what this whole gospel is all about. Bible declares that because of sin we are all guilty. Each and every one of us, not a single person is righteous in the sight of God. Every one of us, we are guilty. Each man has gone his own way, the Bible declares. Some have gone the ways of evil, hatred. We have war, we have fitness, we have unforgiveness. We have perversion and sexual immorality. And it is a power that holds all men in bondage. When God looked at this situation, he said he was going to, as a matter of fact, it was not an afterthought. It was in his plan. Bible declares that Jesus came into this world because we are all guilty and on our way to hell. Let's see, let me tell you, my friends, heaven and hell are real places. But the very reason Jesus came into this world to save each and every one of us from going to that place called hell. Hell is so real. But Jesus came. There is the story in the Bible of the person that in this Bible context Jesus was talking about. There was a father who had great love in his heart. And there was a son that represents the whole human race, each and every one of us. The prodigal world, the prodigal people, each and every one of us going to their own different way. This son had everything that was good until the moment he said to his father, Give me that which belongs to me. And the interesting thing that I cannot understand was the father permitted him to have everything. He took everything that belongs to him and went into a far country and lived a riotous life, the Bible tells us. And my friend, each and every one of us will are represented in that son. We have gone our own ways and squandered everything that God has given us. The talent God has given us, we have used for righteous living. The body he gave us, we have used for sexual immoralities and perversions. The tongue he gave to you and I, we have used for slander and gossips. The money he gave to you, you use in gambling and using for all wrong things. Everything that you see in this world including every faculties of yours that brain he gave it to you to be used for his purpose but what will God do do we need those eyes that you have God gave it to you but what do you use it for on pornographic movies yes oh he gave you those bodies for his own glory but we have all gone astray the Bible says everything that belongs to the father that son went and squandered it on riotous living each and every one of us we have squandered everything that belongs to god for our own evil ways 
But the Bible says there came a time when this son began to be in need. There came a time when he came to his senses and saw how poor he was. He saw his wretchedness. Oh, we plead with God that you will see today your wretched condition. You know there are many who think everything is okay with them. You tell them, come to the Lord Jesus. They say, no, I'm okay. You are not okay, my friend. You are not okay because at this moment you are on your way to hell. Without God in your life, you are walking to hell, even this moment. But listen, let me tell you, the reason why Jesus came into this world is because he has no pleasure in the death of any sinner. He has no pleasure in the death of anybody. Think about it. What would God gain in you going to hell? He has no pleasure in seeing any soul wasted. How many of you who are fathers and mothers, no matter how bad your child is, will want them to go to prison? You will do everything in your power to stop them from going to that prison. You don't want them to spend their life in jail. My friend, God has an even far greater love for each and every one of you. Though this very moment you are living in sin, though this very moment you are living in adultery and fornication, though this very moment the very tongue is given you, you are using for gossip and slander and hatred the very heart he has given to us that should be his temple. That is where the devil sits. But my friend, in spite of all your evil, in spite of all your wickedness, Jesus loves you. Amen. This very moment, all God wants from every one of you here in this is to turn to God. Bible says only look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Listen, let me tell you, my friend, there are so many of you who have heard this gospel over and over. You've heard it ever since you were a child. You've heard it over and over until it no longer makes meaning to you. Listen, let me tell you, the grace of God has an expiry date. God is love, but he wants you to know that if you die in your condition this very moment, if you die in your sins unforgiven, if you die in your sins unrepented from, you will have to know the reality of hell. But God has no pleasure. Listen again. God has no pleasure in the death of any sinner. He has no death pleasure in seeing anybody being wasted. As a matter of fact, God has the best in mind for you. The Bible says the devil comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. The devil has come to steal your joy. He has come to steal your relationship with God. He has come to steal the union you are supposed to have with your makeup. He has come to steal and to kill and to ultimately destroy you. The Bible declares Jesus came into this world that you and I may have life in abundance. Life in abundance, abundant life. Listen, let me tell you, God's purpose for you and I is abundant life. What does it mean to have abundant life? It's a life of vital union with God. It means God lives with you and in you. It means a life above sin. It means a life that God has touched, has put his seal upon. It means a life that is on its way to eternal life. It means a life filled with the blessings of God. Jesus came to give you and I this abundant life. And listen, let me tell you, this abundant life can be yours today. You can have abundant life today, the Bible declares, if only you will believe and you will turn to the Lord Jesus. Oh, look unto Jesus, all you ends of the earth and be saved. 
Look unto him who died on the cross of Calvary. Listen, Jesus indeed died on the cross for you. It has been said that even if you, you my friend hearing this, if you are the only one on earth, Christ Jesus will still have died for you. Jesus died on that cross and he wants you to see him with those two hands nailed with those two feet nailed to the cross for your sins for my sins he willingly laid down his life and all god is saying is look unto me listen let me tell you there is a strong connection between you looking and you being saved in the wilderness when the children of israel were walking to the promised land the bible says when they seen and god permitted snakes to beat them and many died god commanded moses to make a frozen serpent and lift it up and as many that looked to that serpent were healed listen let me tell you jesus indeed said he said just as moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so shall the son of man be lifted up and as many who will look to jesus on that cross will be saved i want to plead with you wherever you may be wherever you may be walking on the street only look to jesus look unto the lord jesus christ there is salvation in no other name. There is salvation in no other name.